Hey, how's it going? Let's see if I can figure out what's up with this engine. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know I bought a 4x4 with a Vortec engine. And when I checked it out, the oil pressure was not great. So in this video, I'm going to tear into the engine and see if I can find the cause. But before I do that, I want to do a quick lead down test and check out the health of the engine. Now, I've already sprayed down the spark plugs with some penetrating oil. And I got my lead down tester over here. Quick tip, if you ever buy anything that comes with a bunch of packaging foam, save it. With a, with a cheap tote, makes a good case for your expensive tester. Give me a few here and I'll get the plugs out and we'll get some readings. The lead down test results are in and they're not bad, it could be better. But before I give you the numbers, there's one thing I should mention. Technically, this test is supposed to be done on a warm engine. But since the engine is no longer in the vehicle, that's not possible. So this is just kind of a best guess. Anyways, here's what I got. Of course, I use my long arc racing lead down tester. And these are the numbers. Here you can see. Cylinder 6 was the worst. Start off at 80%. And by the way, if you're doing a leak down test and you have a leaking valve, you can give it a quick tap with the dead blow and see if it'll improve. Sometimes they're gummed up, and if they don't improve, it's probably something worse. Back to the results. So 6 improved all the way down to 5%. Then 5 started off kind of bad at 15%, but it did improve to 9%. And four actually got worse. It went up to 10%. So, since I plan to pull the heads anyway, I think when I have them off, I will lap the exhaust valves and the bad ones. Maybe I'll lap them all. We'll see if I feel like doing it at the time. I mean, technically, blah, 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 blah. I'm supposed to get a valve job, you know, rebuild the engine, new vehicle, whatever. I, this is a budget build. I'm just going to do what I can do here at home. I mean, if I was putting money into this build, I would do it all right, but I'm not. And these are the plugs if you're interested. They look, they're not bad. Cylinder 6 was the worst, and it's probably because of that stick and valve. But otherwise, they're not bad. I don't know how long they were in there for, but the gaps didn't open up too bad. The stock gap was, is 60 thousandths, and you can see they opened up to about you know, a little over 4 thousandths. Now, before I get into the oil problem, there's a few other things I wanted to mention. When I pulled the distributor, I noticed that the gear was starting to wear pretty decent. Now, of course, this wouldn't cause an oil pressure problem. I mean, eventually, if it went completely out, there would be no oil pressure, but the engine would stop running before that. Still, it would be a potential future problem and cause the engine to run poorly. Then, I did finally look up the cash numbers for the block, and that confirms that this is a 96 to 99 Vortec 350. So, confirmed. Confirmed. And confirmed. This is a Vortec 350 engine. While removing the engine, there was a few obvious signs that had been worked on before. And the engine or transmission had been removed or replaced. For example, there was a wire loom bracket here that was left unhooked and over here the transmission dipstick bracket was also unhooked. And that indicates that the engine and transmission had been separate, separated at some point. Then while I was taking apart the engine I noticed that the bolts for the engine mounts are grade 8. And I'm pretty sure GM did not use grade 8 hardware. <clears throat> so I can be almost certain this engine has been replaced at some point and the mileage is now uncertain I mean I suppose it could have been rebuilt but judging by the condition it is in I highly doubt it there's quite a bit of gunk on this engine so more than likely it is a junkyard engine with a few hundred thousand miles on it or who knows still this is the engine I got so I'm gonna make the best of it 
Well, <laughs> provided the bottom end is still good. Next, I'm going to get into seeing if I can figure out what's wrong with the oil pressure. But first, it's time to get a bite to eat. Be right back. Refueled and ready to go. Now, I had planned on doing a few different things to try and figure out what, what's wrong with the oil pressure, kind of a before and after comparison. But while removing the engine, I kind of screwed that up. You see, this engine has a oil cooler on it that feeds into the radiator. And when I unhooked those lines, I thought they were power steering cooling lines. So I didn't account for them, and I kind of mangled them. Now I can't loop them, and it will definitely leak. And I am not going out and buying new parts just for a test. So I'm going to have to skip that step and go right on to install one of these older adapters. Then I'll prime it and see if the pressure goes up. Give me a few to get this on there, and I'll set the tripod. I almost forgot to mention that the oil filter itself could be the problem with the pressure. Well any part of the oil cooling system, including the radiator. But the filter, I could have changed easily in the vehicle if I could have got it off. See, this socket's probably been on there for some time, and because it was a 4x4, there's a dry shaft right here. So there wasn't very much room to work with, and I could barely get both hands on it, but that sucker would not budge. I did try one of these oil filter sockets, and because of this grip stuff on there, the one I tried did not go on. Now if I had tried both of them, I would have replaced the oil filter and seen if that was the issue. So, oops! Oh well. Also, I did try the strap wrench, but that only resulted in starting to crush the oil filter and I didn't want to mangle it on the vehicle. Anyways, let me get back to taking this thing apart. Here's some quick info. As I mentioned earlier, I'm changing one of these older style oil filter adapters. And they have a bypass valve. And an old performance trick is to remove and plug that bypass valve. There's the valve removed. And here you can see on this adapter, I've plugged it. Now, this modification it should be only done if you're going to use the vehicle in warm weather and you're going to let the engine warm up nice and good before you rev it. Otherwise you can burst or blow off your oil filter without a bypass. In order to do this modification you need a quarter inch NTP tap and of course quarter inch NTP plugs and I use some red thread locker because I don't want to come out of there and that stuff is kind of like liquid weld. This is the gasket you're going to need. And by the way, that old gasket was a pain to get off. It was way really baked down there. They even RTV'd the seal for the cooler adapter. The torque spec for the bolts is 13 to 15 foot pound. And I'm going to use Blue, blue thread locker for that. And this thread locker is surface insensitive, so if there's a little bit of oil on the threads because I can't clean them thoroughly because the block's so dirty, then it won't be a problem. Now you can buy aftermarket non-bypass adapters. But they cost about 30 bucks or so. And this was a budget-friendly option. This is also going to allow me to use a larger oil filter. You see on the left, the new oil filter, and of course on the right, the old oil filter. And by the way, that thing was on way too tight. So, once I snug my new oil filter, I'll have more filter media to, you know, filter better, of course, and it will flow a little better. The plug adapter's on and a new oil filter. Before I do that, I want to show you something real quick. I went ahead and cut the filter, and it is not looking good. There's a lot of trash in the bottom. 
You can see the trail trash dripping off the filter. And as I spread the pleats in the filter, there was plenty of trash trapped in there too. So things are not looking good. Some of it is magnetic, but not all of it. So here we go. Dropped in all the way. Now, when you're priming your oil filter, don't push down your drill. You want to just pull the trigger because your, your distributor doesn't press down on it and you're going to cause excessive wear on your oil pump gears. I mean, this was an old oil pump, but if you had a new one. Pressure's not bad. I mean, I usually see that on a regular engine, about 40 plus. Now that's not too bad. I mean, I did read about people getting more PSI when they move the oil cooler, so we'll see. Next, I need to tear off the top of the engine, drain the oil, I'll flip it over, pull the pan, Get in the bearings and I'll show you what I find. Holy cow, look at this. You can barely see the head bolt because there's so much trash in there. If I stopped and showed you every messed up thing about this engine, this video would probably be way too long. But check this out. <laughs> Almost. Two down, 14 to go. <laughs> I'll finish after I check the bottom end. Good news, I found the problem. Game bearings. Bad news is, I don't know if I can fix that. I'm going to get it out and take a look at it. Stay tuned. The lifters fought well, but they're out. Well, most of them. There's a couple of stubborn ones that I couldn't get out. But they were out enough to get the cam out. By the way, these things, this push button channel lock, got from Menards. I love those things. So, here's the cam shaft. Not good. Bearings are toast. So is the engine pretty much. The oil pump didn't look too bad. But these push rods, whew. this one's from another engine at about 90,000 miles and obviously was well maintained. These ones were not. I have never seen an entire push rod coated with gunk. The whole thing. That's nasty. Well, that didn't go as I'd hoped. I wanted to try and fix the engine and save it, but at this point, it's going to need a total rebuild, and I'm not doing that. I have better cores to rebuild. It's not the point of this project. I want to use an engine that already runs, do a few mods to it, Drop it in, cruise it, and have some fun. So, 
All I can do is keep moving forward at this point. I'll prep the intake. I still got the Vortec heads. I'll find another engine. And I'll figure it out. So, thanks for watching. Keep it real.